I have fantastic news, everybody. My literary masterpiece, Life of the Party, which you have not read yet, will now be available in audiobook form. The hope was you called and said you thought it was a great idea because the pre-sales are going so well. So if you haven't already, please go to BurtBurtBurt.com and pre-order your copy of Life of the Party. Pre-orders determine how well a book does overall, and if you tweet me a copy of your pre-order, I will follow you, I will favorite you, I will do your podcast, I will buy you beer. Ask anyone in Edmonton or in Pittsburgh. I'm still on tour. Nash Tuckett, Nash Mantucket, Tampa, Irvine, Philly, Des Moines, Dayton, Phoenix, my show Trip Flip airs every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Travel Channel with a new episode today's guest, stand-up comedian, Boston native, and Vine sensation, Rydoon. This is the Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Are you kidding me? Are, are we live right now? Yeah, I think so. Let me see. I did a podcast with some fraternity brothers one time, and they were absolutely horrific human beings. <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, they and I forgot to record. Do you need a beer? I accept. I accept that offer right here. I would drink one, but today I'm supposed to be with my kids, and so I'm uh, I'm being a, a responsible parent. I got tall boys in there, and I got Coors Lights. Oh boy, I'll go for Coors Light. Yeah. So wait, what did you do last night? Uh, I was actually hanging out with Andy Milanakis all night, like late oh, night. Man, he's a big Vine guy. Kind of. Yeah. He. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Nice. What's he like? He's really cool. He's yeah. he's normal. Like really? he's he he's he's a weirdo, but yeah. like he doesn't come off normal at all. No. Like in his vines, like and I'm <clears throat> I said and I, I know everything's like a little bit of an art piece, you know, but like his vines depressed me. I had to stop following him. Really? <laughs> yeah. When he was two, he was like clearly trashing hotel rooms or his own. Apartment. Yeah, I actually talked about that with him last night. What did he say? Um, did he really do that, or was it uh, like a th- a bit? That was him saying, like, I think saying fuck you to trying on. I think people are giving him shit. For, he was like, you're not trying on Vine anymore. So he was like, fuck you. Like, here's how, here's how hard I can't try. Like, yeah. By, like, smashing plates. You, you're, uh, how old are you? 29. No, you're, not that, you're, you're still fucking young as shit. Okay, thanks, man. I'm, I'm old in Vine years. Like, my fans think I'm definitely 25. Old in Vine years. <laughs> Jason Nash is on Vine. Yeah. 41. <laughs> I'm doing a show with Jason on uh, Saturday. Wait, where? In, uh, Hollywood Improv. Oh, nice. 3 p.m., 13 plus. 3 p.m.? <laughs> yeah. 13 plus? Some daytime teen comedy. Oh, is it one of those tour bus comedy things? <laughs> it's like a Vine show. Oh, really? Yeah, so I'm doing that with... Uh, it's me, Jason Nash. Do you know Vincent Marcus, the beatbox guy? Uh, really talented voice guy. Manon Matthews, local comedian, also big on Vine, and I'm headlining. And uh, really? it's, it's Elton. How many followers do you have on Vine now? Don't tell. No, don't tell me. I want to look. Sure. Uh, Go for it. I just, I just saw the Vine you did last night about you must have been on Hollywood Boulevard. Oh yeah. <laughs> did you enjoy that? I can I, I have so many questions about Vine because I was obsessed with it for the longest time. Right, and now you're not. Well, no, I still am. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I got a lot. Nine million? Yeah. Are you fucking shitting me? It's ridiculous. Holy fuck! How did that happen? Uh, I got. What was your first video that you were like, "Oh shit, this is taking off"? I started doing Jay Z impressions. That I, those are really good Jay Z impressions. Bobby Kelly was the one that turned me on to you. Oh no shit! All right, Bobby nice. Kelly was, yeah. You did something. I think it was a Jay Z or it was a. Jay Z reading a storybook or something. Yeah, I, I used to do like Jay Z reading children's books. Yeah, and uh, and Bobby Kelly. Uh, I think I was with Bobby. And nice. We were doing vines. He's like, and he's like, you gotta see this guy right here. He's fucking hilarious. Oh he's man. Like, Boston guy, fucking hilarious. <laughs> fucking Boston guy, dude. <laughs> I've been on that podcast three times. Like, sh- like being in the man cave right now is a dream come true. So thank you for having me. <laughs> I remember uh, you. I tweeted you. I noticed you followed me on Vine. I was in uh, like health class. I was taking nursing classes. I tweeted you like, "Thanks for following me." Then you tweeted back like, "You're hilarious." I love you. I love the. It's what it is. Made my day. What? Oh, I'm glad you are fucking great on Vine. If you guys don't follow, I mean, you probably do follow him. If you're on Vine, you definitely follow him. Um, (laughs) 
But you, you, the my the one that got me, the one that got me like the one where I went okay was the beer party. Oh, awesome! I loved it because it was like something. It was something that had I been in college would have been <laughs> folded into my our vernacular. R- yeah, it would have been something that it was like. Uh, it's basically a great SNL sketch. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Have you ever thought about doing SNL? Oh yeah, since childhood. Like uh, yeah. I grew up loving SNL. Chris Farley was huge in my life. Um, I, I mean, SNL isn't like a set goal for me. I'm just trying to like be a successful comedian, stand-up comedian. How long have you been doing stand-up? <sighs> Not long, man. Uh, under a year. Really? So I did my first open mic about two years ago. Yeah. Bombed really hard. Went, got scared back into music. I've been a mus- musician for a while. But, like, my first open mic, like... How bad could be? I've seen that, but how bad is that? Everything was met with silence. So it wasn't like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was in a... It's at Grandma's Basement, which no longer exists yeah. exists in Boston, but, like, underground, like, comics, comic place. It was a room packed full of comedians and, like... Hang on one second. Let me make sure my mic's fucking... Like, my mic's low as shit. <laughs> Sure. So my daughters are playing with the fucking levels in here. God damn that it. That sounds better. That sounds a lot better. I think it looks better. Okay, keep going. So you uh, came basement. Yeah, uh, my first open mic. Um, I had, like, prepped way too much for this. I, like, cared way Dude, too much about that it. that is the biggest <laughs> downfall of getting into stand-up is giving a fuck. Yeah. Because you can literally, you can literally, I remember John Beamer was the guy that got me into my first open mic in New York mm-hmm. City at the Boston Comedy Club. And he went off to Martha's Vineyard for the weekend, and he prepared. And he worked all weekend for this Monday night showcase. For his and, for his, for his mic? open mic. <laughs> he went, I mean, he went to the beach. Like, and he fucking wrote, and he got it down, wow. and he practiced it. He got up on stage, and he fucking drew a blank. <laughs> and he, he went up, and he was like, hey, everybody. <sighs> Yeah, yikes. Does anyone watch Friends? <laughs> and it was like, yeah. And he was like, okay. And then he goes, oh my God, I forgot what I was going to say. And he hopped off stage and it got a huge laugh. Then he jumped back on stage like, okay, what's up with Friends? Oh my God, it's happening again. <laughs> he got off and it was so fucking great. Oh, but funny. that was like, yeah, that was the... And then I got up and I had not prepared at all. I had no, no insight, but I just talked about jacking off at a cheeseburger and everyone fucking lost it. And he was like, he was like how does that happen? Yeah. He was like, I quit. I was like, really? <laughs> Did he quit? He, yeah, he's now in med school in Chicago. <laughs> well, good for him, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. He <laughs> was a journalist, moved to Atlanta, was a journalist, and then... So wait, how bad was yours? It meant too much to me. Uh, like, I should have just really not given a shit. But, like, I did, had prepped for it too much, and uh, my angle was too dark. I was talking about, like... I, I mean, my first joke I thought was funny. I'll tell it on air right now. This is my first ever joke. Should I do that or should yeah, I not? No, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> All right. It was something along the lines of, uh, I talked to my dad today. Actually, I'm not sure if it was my dad or a brick wall, but they both say, I love you too at the same frequency. So <laughs> okay. That's, that's sad. No, it's it's sad. <laughs> <laughs> Does it come from a true place? Yeah, yeah. My dad's like super, or I, like super Irish Catholic. Really? He just he he doesn't say I love you, which is okay. Yeah, it's interesting. My dad uh, is my dad will say I love you now, but for a long time I would say I love you, and he'd go okay, <laughs> and I go I go dad okay. Yeah, it's so funny too because my friends make big joke about it. They literally think that it's like I I forget what I was on a TV show and they were like, your dad says I love you, and I was like I didn't give a fuck about that. Like it was like the. What would you rather have, this, like a million dollars, or your dad's acceptance? I was like, my dad totally fucking accepts me. Yeah. He just is old school. It's like he didn't say I love you to yeah. his dad, and exactly. so it's uncomfortable. Right. When I, you want to hear something creepy? I had to kiss him on the lips every night I went to home from high school. Really? <laughs> he wanted to find out if I was doing drugs or drinking. Wait, that's... I had to fucking like, kiss him on the lips and the cheek every single night I came home in high school. Every single and fucking night. As a drug test? No, yeah, like, no. I was like, so he could see if I was drinking. So, like, that's, <laughs> like, he'd be like, give me a kiss, buddy. I'd be like, oh, so and it I was go, like Dad, disguised. Not, it was for, I remember the first time he did it, he was like, give me a kiss. I go, Dad, I'm not giving you a fucking kiss. He's like, give me a kiss. Give me a kiss in the mouth, son. I go, no, I'm not giving you a kiss. He goes, I'm your father. It's not gay. I go, I don't care. I'm not kissing you on the lips. He goes, have you been drinking? I go, no. And he goes, then prove it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, so I went in 
And like I remember one time I had a penny in my mouth and I kissed it. Like, cause remember that? Oh, yeah. Do you like remember to, that? To disguise your breath? Yeah. I never did that, but I, I, I would like stuff peanut butter in my mouth. Oh, like just, I never thought about food. I was like <laughs> mouthwash or, or de, uh, like or uh, deodorant. Yeah, Wait, pennies. Deodorant? Like, yeah, like Not in uh, your mouth. Nucor Nuc- Oh, yeah. Like, Nuc- how do you say it? Nucor Dwar? Nuc- n- do you remember that? You don't yeah, remember it. Yeah, yeah, the black, the yeah. Black. Yeah, 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 yeah. Noir. Noir. Dracar. Dracar Noir. <laughs> Dracar <Dracar-noir. laughs> Noir. <laughs> got it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think for a second. So, uh. I got dry mouth real bad. So, yeah, just keep on fucking, dude. This. There's other stuff up there if you need something. I thought I was at one point last night. I looked at Andy and I was there with my friend Michael Lopriori, who was also a big. I know liner. Michael Lopriori. He's hilarious. Oh, you know who turned me on to Michael Lopriori? Who uh, that? Adam Richman. Yeah, I'm buddies. I be, I've become somewhat buddies with Adam. I've crashed at his place in New York City. He's Adam's. <laughs> Adam's so interesting because, you know, he's tech. He's technically. I mean, he's famous. He's yep. very recognizable. And he'll he'll be doing vines in like the airport. Like I saw him doing a vine in the airport. And there you have to be very comfortable with not caring what people think of you when you do successful vines. Totally. Like like you know all the vine superstars, like Brittany. Yep. Brittany. She I don't know if she's fucking with people. Like when she when she fucks with people, like I don't know if that's real or staged. Either way, I'm like, holy shit, you've got to have fucking balls. Does that make sense? <laughs> Yeah, totally. Like when you fuck with people, when you put on the wig and you walk down the street, do people like? Are is it people, real? Yeah. Do people like? Is are they really fucking looking at you like you're crazy? Yeah, especially when I have the wig on. That's a, the reason why I did the wig and stuff. Well, yeah. it was also for the my original idea was a, the punchline was why won't anyone talk to me? It's yeah, like, obviously it's because I look like this. I would show show my face at the end, but I put that wig on in a way too much lipstick. And uh, people react like they enjoy it. Like it, the whole experience becomes like fun and like it's crazy. Like I, I think I'm like, what what the fuck am I doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking like this better get a bunch of likes. Like this better go well. But like I'm walking down the street, people are like construction men are like, what's up, girl? Yeah. And I'll just respond like, thanks, bro. Like I don't know. It's a it's been a lot of fun. What was your question? <laughs> uh, uh, when you like the real ones, like when you're pranking people, yeah. Like Simon Rex uh, is is big on Vine too, yep. And uh, and that's why. I, and Adam turned me on to Michael Lopriori and Simon. Nice. And I've known Simon Rex for right. I've known of him for a long. He's time. He's been on this podcast, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I had him on the podcast. He's tall. He's like is fucking he? six three? Oh damn! Dude, I didn't think I didn't think he was going to be that tall. He he was uh, nicer than I. He's the sweetest fucking guy in the world. He's got like I think there's a look in his eyes. Maybe it looks he looks like he might not be all that kind, but yeah. Well, he's got he. What it is is he's. I mean, this is gonna. I'm. This is gonna sound like I've paid more attention to it than he has. But he's kind of like uh, Hollywood royalty because he's been in the scene of Hollywood longer than anyone I fucking know. Like right, yeah. He, he has... knows the players. Like he's good friends with Paris Hilton. Like huh. that scene. Like so. So you assume people in that scene are assholes. Like right. I don't know Paris Hilton, but I assume she's not the nicest person. I remember one, I went to Kimberly Stewart's house one time, and Kimberly Stewart was a cunt to me. <laughs> yeah, she had a party. I don't even know who that is. Rod Stewart's da- daughter. Oh, all right. Yeah, oh, she like shit. dates a DJ. Dude, I might have actually done a show. Uh, I did a show when I first got to LA, ho- hosting for fucking music acts. And there was one band I was told a bunch, uh, like s- several of Rod Stewart's kids were in that band. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, are you gonna are you gonna move to LA? Do you think? Yeah. You are. I am. Yeah. I mean, what's the time frame? Let's see. My lease is up in September. Oh, um, really? You moving out with friends? I have a girlfriend, a long term girlfriend. How long? So I'd be moving out with longer her. than stand up. Yeah, man. Oh, how long? Eight years. Holy shit! Since I- I'm like you, kind of since college. Fuck. We met in college, although you met your wife in high school. No, I'm, no, no, no. I met my wife out here. Oh, after college. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you've been together forever, right? Ten years. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, fucking eight years. Wow. So, is she cool with what? What were you doing before you got into stand up? Uh, I was in landscaping actually. Really? Going to be? I was thinking about, or I was planning on owning my own landscaping company, but then I realized that I didn't want to be a small business owner. 
at all. Like, yeah. I saw what, what my boss was doing, working like almost around the clock. And before that, I was I went to UMass Boston for sociology just because I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And uh, I was always a musician. I was trying to be a rock star forever, pretty really? much. Really? What was your – were you a guitarist or – uh, sax player to begin with. What? Shut up. Yeah. And uh, I went into beatboxing mostly, and then the last thing I did was a lead singer. Really? Just of a rock band. Front man. <laughs> yeah. It's a fucking great title when you get arrested to tell the cop what you are. <laughs> front man. I got arrested. Front, see this jacket? Yeah. I got arrested in college. <laughs> Not arrested, but they... Uh, the beginning stages of being arrested, but I didn't actually get arrested. Right. And they asked cuffed. me... You get cuffed? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I was sat down... Uh, <laughs> And but they were doing it like they were doing it for my own good. If that makes any sense, there was going to be a fight, and uh, they had come over to kind of calm me down. Gotcha. And so and I was really upset, and uh, <laughs> and the cop was like, "Listen, we're, we're going to take you in, and it's going to remove you from this situation." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> right now, everyone's like, "Wait, who the fuck were you going to fight?" Because now I'm hearing this, and I'm like. It sounds like I was going to beat up a girl, but, <laughs> but it wasn't. It was a dude. It was a dude. We need to separate you from the situation. Yeah, they, they were like, we need to separate you from the situation. Shit. Everything's going to be fine. But they're going to take you in. And then the guy said to me, he's like, uh, what's your name? And I was like, am I being arrested? And he goes, what's your name? I said, Burt Kreischer. And he goes, occupation. I said, front man. And he goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, front man. He goes, what's that? I go, uh, I told this to Pat Moynihan, the lead singer of Train. And he's like, I've never called myself a front man ever. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I, that's what I, I, I viewed myself as a front man. Was that a, that was a, that was a genuine answer? Like, oh yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm at my funniest when I don't, when I'm definitely not trying to be funny. When I'm trying to be serious, like when I'm in er, like I yeah. wrote a song, I wrote a song. I don't have any fucking guitars out. But I wrote a song oh, called um, called uh, uh, oh fuck I can't even tell you the name because it makes me embarrassed. But I wrote nice. a song and I and I played it for my band. I had a band in college. Oh okay. And I played it for them and I I was like I was like what do you guys think? And they thought it was so funny to watch me be serious <laughs> that they would get me to play it at parties. And then I and I thought they liked it. But what <laughs> right. they were doing was saying. This is the worst fucking song we've ever heard, and you'll enjoy how bad it is. And so I would sing it in earnest, and they'd even sing it with me, and they were just oh, like, no. it's fucking, and everyone was laughing at me, but I had no fucking clue. My buddy Obi was like, he was like, I love you, but you cannot play that song anymore. That's He's like, hilarious. it creeps people out. Like, <laughs> like they, I came into band practice one time, and they were jamming the, uh, to some old U2 songs, mm -hmm. and I was like, I was like, oh, I've, I'm, you know, I know U2. I didn't know you too, though, but I didn't know that they were playing that. They were just jamming. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is fucking awesome. I was like, guys, these are really great songs. And they're like, you think? I go, yeah, they're really good. And I was like, guys, well, these could be hits. And they're like, you think they could be hits? I was like, yeah, they could be hits. I go, and they're like, why don't you try to put some lyrics to them? And I was like, okay. So I fucking made up lyrics to you two songs. <laughs> and I must have looked like a fucking asshole. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but that's, I think that's when I'm, my funniest is when I'm trying to be serious. Because I, I don't, I don't. I would just look. I would I imagine a porn. Now, do you do that in your stand up? Do you, do you try to be serious in stand up? No, you know I'm funny? so fucking in a weird place with my stand up right now. I, um, I am. I, I had these like two little breakthroughs this weekend where I oh, where nice. I was like where I told stories that were like very vulnerable. But I was I was going through awesome. a little bit of a spiral this weekend. Oh yeah, yeah, and it happened on stage. Like it, I, I I'm. Very simply, when I drink a lot, uh, my body, my body's fine the next day. I can work out. I can do everything. But my, I think the dopamines in my head are low. So I start like getting obsessive compulsive about, I mean, if I told you, you would fucking laugh at me. You'd be like, are, are you fucking serious? I'd be like, yes. I start thinking that. Some, that I'm going to die of something that's and yeah. I and it goes from one thing to the next and and literally it can go from the other and so what happened happened to me on stage and and I was in that place and I was like fuck it and so I got very vulnerable and I ended up telling like three stories that I would never normally tell and they cool. worked and I went oh wow that's interesting and then I thought oh they worked because I'm sure people have gone through that too and yeah. I was like wow that's such an interesting such an interesting place to come from with stand up because a lot of my stand ups always been like 
you know crazy crazy machine stories machine stories and fought a bear fucking jumped out of a plane with Rachel Ray drinking sex like that and so I was like wow I told this I told this story and I was like wow no wait where are you at one year in where are you at with your stand up just joke to joke uh no I'm going through (laughs) I shouldn't maybe say a similar thing but I'm talking about my family and my mom and my dad I have this bit I'm trying to work out. It's about feeling, feeling like a creepy uncle. I'm an uncle. I have a bunch of nieces and nephews. Yeah. So I'm trying to like do a bit about the... F- Are you an uncle at all? No. Maybe you feel like a creepy dad. You ever like walk around with your kids and you think like people are thinking you're a, a creep or like... I, well, I, th- I think I definitely... <clears throat> I definitely... Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I remember I used to... It's tour- hard to ex- explain. I know. I know. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. Uh, I used to tour with this guy, and our, our road manager was this guy named Walter. And Walter had two boys, and we would go over to their house, and and kids don't know that they can't just sit on your lap right. when you're yeah, a single yeah. dude. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, and like, and they'd run around naked at the pool, and I'd be like, dude, dude, put a fucking right. snuggie on that kid yeah. or something, because that just seeing a little boy's penis <laughs> fucking makes me cringe because I'm like, I'm like. I understand that I should be adult enough to go, right. it's fine, he's a child. Yeah. But I'm still like, hey, man, it's weird. there's a fine line between that, you know, I don't know if that's what you're talking about, but... Yeah. Um, like, one little story is my niece Bridget asked me to play Tickle Monster one time, and I said, what's... <laughs> that sounds like a molestation <laughs> know, game. Yeah. <laughs> Let's well, play Tickle Monster. Wait, that really sounds like an invite to molester. Yeah. And then I asked her what that was, which was a mistake, but... Oh, it was funny. Yeah. She, she said it's when adults go down in, into the basement and tickle little kids. <laughs> so it's like... Wait, who? how did she learn it? Oh, okay. So Tickle Monster, for the record, it's just when... I'm sure you do this. Like, you chase little kids like, I'm going to get you. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, if you catch them, give them a little tickle on the shoulders or whatever. Yeah. So but I guess uh, with her grandparents, they call it Tickle Monster. And it really is... She plays it in the basement. <laughs> She really does end up in the basement. That's like where they play. Yeah, yeah. Like a furnished basement. And it's it's when adults go down into the basement and tickle little kids. Pretty that's much. fucking But when you wear it like good, that, it's fucking creepy. Yeah, man. tickle monsters are great. That sounds like it does sound like something Michael Jackson would have played. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, like no, but that's a good I like that bit because uh there is I got I did an article for some parenting magazine <laughs> nice. one time. And they were like, best place to tickle a child. And I was just being <laughs> honest. Oh, my God. And I said, the best, and, the, and the, I, I, this is going to sound creepy as See, that's fuck. A creepy, that's a creepy question. Yeah, it is a creepy, <laughs> it's a leading question. <laughs> yeah. And so I said, the best place, and it truthfully is, the um, right below the diaper line, like right in your guts right here, yeah. is the best t- place to tickle, tickle my children. Uh-huh. But I... I made it sound like any child, like go up to any child, put your hand in their diaper and tickle them down there. <laughs> right, and it, right. I read it and I was like, mother of God, yeah, nice. why did someone edit that out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Nice. Yeah. And actually, have you seen the movie, well, have you seen Parenthood, Steve Martin? Yeah, of course. You know that scene towards the beginning that shows the naked kid, naked little boy in, uh, dressed like a cowboy? Yeah. All right, so I saw, watched that movie as a kid. That scene made me very uncomfortable. Yeah. And then I watched it as an adult, like very recently, brought back the same exact feelings. I saw that little boy penis, and it, <laughs> it made me very uncomfortable. <laughs> it like brought me back, like nostalgic for like feeling uncomfortable for little boy penises. That movie was fucking great. That that movie was amazing. It was like, yeah, it was touching. It was funny. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Uh, at all. Do you know what movie was? Uh, you know what movie was really fucking good? About Time. Have you seen it? No. It's I, you, I, it's, I just, I'm obsessed. My wife believes there's two types of people. People that like time travel movies and people that don't. Yeah, I love I like. time travel movies and I realized why I love them the other day. Like, I, Time Traveler's Wife is one of my favorite movies ever. Fucking I have never love. seen that. I don't, you no reason for you to see it because it's a chick movie. Oh, okay. But I fucking <laughs> love it. Quantum Leap, favorite oh, yeah, yeah. show ever. I love Back Quantum Leap. Back to the Future? Leap. Oh, Back to the okay. Future, fucking amazing! Oh, yeah. How about Donnie Darko? Amazing! Yeah, I love Donnie. I Darko. I love Donnie Darko. <laughs> Donnie Darko was the first movie I saw where I was like, "Ooh, I this is I get it. This is the kind of movie you have to watch twenty times to figure out what the fuck this is exactly. about." Exactly. I I watched that s- several times, and then I actually watched it with commentary, 
the whole way through. Yeah. I was like a Donnie Darko nerd for a while. I was while. a huge Donnie. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I'm seriously questioning your commitment to Sparkle Motion. <laughs> Every team I've ever been that needed a team, I call Sparkle Motion. <laughs> nice. Every fucking team I've always called Sparkle Motion. Dude, Frank the Bunny, that scared the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. That fucking movie. But, dude, there's Wake that, up. the, the that movie, the voice. part of the movie where they're walking through the party and... Dun, 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 dun. And the music, the music in Donnie oh, Darko is great. I have the awesome. fucking, I have the soundtrack. Uh, head over heels. Something happens and I'm head over yeah, yeah, heels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, they don't make movie, they don't make music like that anymore. And you don't remember it really. You're my sister's age. Like you're b- both born in like what, 81, 82? 84. 84. Yep. Uh, eight, in 89, 87, 86. The music that was made was this like, uh, it's like Morrissey and Susie and the Banshees and like all this great like like uh, like the end of uh, the end of the Breakfast Club. Oh yeah, the, yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Don't you, do you forget about, about me? This is yeah. Right now everyone's like, yeah, fucking please don't sing it. But <laughs> it's the truth, man. That the, that music, that music. This is gonna sound so creepy. Um, defined my sexuality if that makes sense hmm. so like i heard that that music all came out right when i started really getting into chicks yeah but it defined my sexuality in the sense that like i i i just this is vulnerable so i'll just say it but like i dreamed of the day i got to kiss a chick like yeah. I, like when i first got into chicks i was like oh i'm like i didn't notice i was straight but i was like oh i'm fucking like it, what, I'm sure that the equivalent of that is to gay, where you go, oh, I'm fucking into dudes. Well, I was like, oh, I'm fucking into chicks. Yeah. And I remember thinking, it'll be fucking awesome when I have a girlfriend. I can like feel her tits. Like, <laughs> and I was like, that'll be a fucking goal. I remember my friend John Freitas had a girlfriend who had big tits, and I was like, holy shit, Julie, like? I forget her name, Julie. Oh, and and I was like, I was like, this is gonna be the best summer ever for him. <laughs> <laughs> he can play with their tits all summer. Uh, that's funny. But that music was around then, mm-hmm. and that music I remember hearing it and just going like, like feeling, uh, feeling like heartbreak or love. Like it sounds crazy, but like I still to this day, if I listen to the Smiths, I get fucking like I can get emotional. Like I, it's it's an it's a weird energy. That's cool. If that makes sense. Like what was I'm your to think of yeah? What was your music that defined? Like girls, like or defined when you came of age, as, as as like a young man, where you know. Oh man, this is kind of embarrassing, but probably Dave Matthews Band. It's not embarrassing. Okay, it thank was you. big, and, and let me tell you something. Dave Matthews is one hell of a fucking musician. Yeah, I've been to a band. lot of Dave Matthews shows. So have I, man. <laughs> Did you know how to do the foot? thing you yeah, had to. I, used to I that. knew you had to because <laughs> if you're if you're you have a, a comedian's brain and you're a musician oh, you, oh, yeah, yeah. you had to be able to do a great dave matthews impression oh yeah yeah <laughs> i i used to i can't do, really do the voice but the the dave dance yeah the dave dance definitely did but you I, learn I, how to play his songs on the guitar or anything on the saxophone man Are stefan you? no uh Leroy moore the sax player Didn't rest, he rest in peace yep yeah he died Wait, so was that why you got into the saxophone Actually, no. I started. I was in third grade, and my sisters like played the flute and stuff and yeah. concert band. So I was like, I want to play in concert band, and I choose the saxophone. Yeah. So I just went from that. But uh, then I discovered Dave. Oh, I bet that was <laughs> serendipitous. Just fucking Dave rolls around. And you're like, I already know how to play the saxophone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty much. But I, I was into DMB uh, far before my peers. Like in high school, it was like really cool to like Dave. Yeah, but I was listening since fucking fourth grade, dude. So That's, they didn't they didn't earn their fanhood like I did. Did you do? You, <laughs> did you have a resentment for the all the all the bandwagoners? Yeah, yeah, I did. Me too. <laughs> Me too. We saw Dave Matthews. I want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I can't remember the name of the bar, but we saw Dave Matthews in Tallahassee. At a bar. So at a bar, awesome. it was it was the Cow House or the Milk Bar. Mm-hmm. And it was the one that was like, I, I mean, apparently that was where hipsters were at the time. We didn't know that. I was just a frat boy. Yep. But like, if you were hip and living in Tallahassee, you went, you went on the other side of the tracks over like near the stadium, kind of. Now I'm sure that area is hot as fuck. But we saw Dave Matthews there, um, and 
uh, he fucking blew our minds, and everyone became Dave fans. Wow, awesome. and and then he blew up, and it was like, and then he blew up, and I remember my girlfriend or ex girlfriend. She ended up fucking my best friend, but I remember <laughs> she started getting into him, and once she started getting into him, I was like, no, 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 no. Right. I tried you turning can't. you on to him when I we heard him in the fucking bar. You yeah. can't like I've always been can't a little bit of a this. I've been I've been a little bit of snob with 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 uh, with art. I'm an art snob. Cool. I liked Dane before anyone liked Dane. Dave. Dane. Dane I'm talking Cook? now I'm talking about Dane. Dane Cook? Yeah. Okay. I liked Dane Cook <laughs> when 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 well, I mean I guess everyone liked Dane, but like I remember watching him in the clubs mm-hmm. and I and I use Dane as an example always because he is he is, he had a Dave Matthews effect. Yeah. In also in the sense that it, it became cool to dislike Dane. Exactly. It, was, it, was, it became really cool. It's, it's currently still awesome to hate Dave Matthews band. Yeah. Like People so many still, comedians make fun of that band. But. Dave Matthews and Dane Cook should do a tour called <laughs> yeah. Suck It, We're Still Rich as Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, but I remember watching Dane and, and being a fan of Dane's and going like, this, like, he's amazing. He really was amazing. I mean, I, there's no way to put... I know I've said this before, but there's no way for me to explain to you what I witnessed or what everyone witnessed. I mean, I'd sit back wow. with movie stars, movie stars that were stand-up comics who fucking would watch him and go and just shit on him because they were fucking terrified to follow him. Big oh, yeah. fucking names. And I literally, it, no, I, you gotta, you, I mean, you gotta understand, this is a time in stand-up comedy when people bombed. Like people, that was part of the art form is that mm-hmm. it was like people were bombing. Like you'd see David Tell and Louis C.K. and they'd have rough sets every now and then and this doesn't happen anymore dane i mean it does right? no but at the time dane went up and he never oh, okay. did anything but monstrous i mean we're talking about showcase sets uh industry showcase fucking bar gigs he murdered effortlessly every time the only other person i've ever seen do that is a guy named greer barnes greer barnes is fucking amazing one of the most amazing comics you've ever seen hmm, but know. and then i th- i think a lot of comics wanted um, Dane's lack of success or the fact that he w- hadn't made it yet helped us like sleep better at night. We're like, well, fuck it. The business is fucked. Right. If yeah, Dane's working his com- ass off. Say that. Yeah. The business is fucked. If Dane hasn't made it and he's the greatest comic, mm-hmm. you know, who get, you know, then fuck it. It's, you know, it's, it's. And then when he blew up, everyone was like, everyone's just, everyone turned on him. Everyone did. <laughs> it's crazy. Not, not. I, paid, don't, I don't think he I, paid his dues. He was doing it for years, and oh, years, right? Oh yeah. It's so bizarre that everyone yeah. turned on him. I mean, there were a lot of people who didn't like him before he blew up. Uh-huh. You know, so, there was a lot yeah. of people who didn't like him before he blew up. But oh, like, who didn't? Yeah, who didn't? Okay. But like, I mean, for the most part, it, it was interesting to watch that backlash. Hmm. I'm always that is one of the things that terrifies me. I don't think I'm ever going to blow up like Dave Matthews or Dane Cook, <laughs> but I am worried about backlash. Right. It's like you know, it's like become when it when it becomes cool to hate someone. Yeah, that I'm I worry about that with my Vine success. Like I'm in Boston, new comedian, like really just trying to make friends in comedy, but th- at the same time I have like a shitload of Vine followers and like that like power. So it's a weird I think definitely some people resent me a little bit. Because I'm booking, I'm booking. Gig- I'm on this po- podcast right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Like all my friends want to be here right now. Yeah, but but well, it, and they they easily can. By the way, it's all they have to do is do like just do something that I notice. Right. That's it. I mean, yeah. it's, really. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that I booked the podcast myself. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm I'm the one who books it. You email me, and I yeah. know who you are. And right. we have a connection. I'll do a podcast with you in a heartbeat. I need fucking episodes. <laughs> right. I mean, I have no fucking problem. I talk over anyone every anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically a, it's a. This is my Monday morning podcast. I just talk to yeah. someone and just let them listen. <laughs> so no, but uh, but it's it's totally fine. And I think you know comics. Gary Go- Goldman and I, a uh, Boston comic. Yep. Gary Goldman and I used to piss and moan at the coffee bean up on Sunset, and just. Be like, how the fuck do we not getting on the road? Like, how are we not getting on the road? Like, we're good comics. No one's fucking booking us. How come we're not on the road? And I think that I think a lot of comics. It's the same thing with Dane. Is they they just go like, well, that just is unfair. That's why he's right. got big on Vine, so that's why he's doing the podcast. Well, yeah, that is, but that's 
Also, the, that's the reason I just know you is that Bobby Kelly saw you. He told me about you. Yeah. I saw you. I watched it. And it wasn't like your shit wasn't funny. Like, your vines are funny. Like, really funny. That's why you have almost 2 million fucking followers. Yeah. So you're, what you're doing Thanks. is right. The thing, the thing that is, you have to be careful from is, is like, and I, I assumed it would have happened to Bo Burnham, but it didn't. Like, that kid fucking blew up on the internet, but then actually was talented as fuck. Right and extremely nice and gracious, and 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 could keep creating material, you know. Like right. he hasn't fucking he hasn't floundered at all. I think he's yeah. doing theaters. That new special he's got. Yeah, That's and awesome. he's funny. He's smart as fuck. Yeah, he's super smart. And he's gonna get out of stand up. I mean, stand up's gonna bore him. He'll be making so? yeah, fucking. You got to be a. Pretty, right, like, what do you think he'll do? Oh, he'll be making he, movies. Do he'll okay. do an opera or he'll do a he'll do a um, musical. Yeah, yeah. And it'll go on Broadway and it'll be a huge hit. And he'll find people that are like him, that are like, that think like him and think mm-hmm. bigger than like set up punch or a story of what happened with me and my daughter. I'm a pretty simple guy. Uh. I'm very cool with the, just the payoff of getting the laugh. I don't need to do the movie. <laughs> I don't right. need to be a movie star. Um, I'm going to be nice, but like, I, would, I wouldn't mind a sitcom. That's my goal. It's like a fucking four camera sitcom, shoots yeah. in the valley. Dude. That's it. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I'll do it. F- give me four years. Get into syndication. Four years and let me do theaters. And and or or better weekends at clubs, more money. It's all I fucking need. Stay on right. Travel Channel. I'll be on Travel Channel for twenty fucking years. I love that gig. I yeah. have a fucking blast on that show. Yeah, um, awesome. I work with the coolest people in the fucking world. But someone like Bo Burnham, his, I think he's a little smarter than that, and I think he would get bored. Mm-hmm. I think he'll. I think stand up. I think stand up's gonna bore him. Yeah, and and if it, you know, but he's a smart kid. He's. He released a poetry book recently, so he's doing poetry. Yeah, <laughs> and he's what, special. Like, he's, is he's like twenty two. Yeah, he's twenty two. I think. Yeah, he, and, he's, and he's like six seven. See, I I just had a thought. Like, god damn it, that I, I just had a moment of jealousy. Like, yeah, bastard, <laughs> fucking twenty two. The biggest mistake you can make is right. is in this business is judging people's age and success against your age and success. Ah, gotcha. Because there's no fucking correlation. There's absolutely no correlation. Um, look at uh, I, I, there's no way to do this other than just shitting on people. So, I'll, uh-huh. Go uh, but for I'll it. say like I'll say <laughs> I'll say look at it on the other side of it. Okay, like Louis C.K. was he fifty? No, right. fifty. He's got to be fifty. Probably the majority of Louis' success started when he was forty-five. Right. You know, and the, but I'd rather that than be some guy who gets some big movie at 25 and then gets a bunch of things and thinks they're the shit. And then when they're at 40, they're like, oh, fuck. I never found out my fucking voice. I never yeah. found out who the fuck I am. I have, no, I have no idea. I feel like now I need to get writers to write my bits for me because I don't know who the fuck I am. I'd rather Yikes. be Louie. Like, I like being 41. I fucking love it. Do you? Yeah. Nice. Doing stand-up at 41, dude. I work with kids that are younger than me, and I just go, you have so much more to figure out who the fuck you are before you know what to talk about. Right. You know? Right. It's like you, all your perspective is going to come from, like, where you are at 29 right now and dealing with fame and hanging out with, you know, don't, like, I when I first came out to Hollywood, I was 27, and I was rich. Fucking development deal, TV show. That's awesome. I was making, like, half a million dollars a year. Oh my god! Partying, and I didn't give a fuck. I just, I literally, I always picked up the tab. Yeah, I was hanging out with famous people. Sounds like Joe Rogan. It was, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Joe had, Joe had a lot more money than I did, <laughs> but like I literally was, I was thought I had it. I remember driving. Um, I remember driving from this chick's house. I spent the night at. I was. I can. I don't. I'm obs- right now. I'm obsessed with small details in life. Okay. Like I don't know why. <laughs> I'm obsessed with small details. Yep, it's good for stand-up. I, I I guess. And I drove there in a yellow blah 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 Mercedes. I was blah, in blah. the first car I'd ever <laughs> bought. It was a it was a black on tan uh, Eddie Bauer Expedition. Oh yeah. I was wearing a Sacramento Kings jersey. Oh, whoa. And I was listening. We're getting to specific. Ja Rule. <laughs> oh, I, I just remember this moment. I remember it distinctly. My arm was out the window, and I was like driving, and I was driving down Franklin, getting ready mm-hmm. to take a left on La Brea. But I was back on Franklin, over by, uh, over by like uh, where UCB is. Okay, exactly where UCB is. I'm and not was, really familiar with the area, but uh, yeah, I but know. If, 
It's over by the 101 and over by uh, Birds, I think. And and so, and I remember it was kind of a brisk morning, and my arm was out the window, and I was looking at my watch, and I was just like, "Huh, I've got it all," and I thought I'd be happier. And I was just like this very empty moment where I was like, I was "Like I'm not really that happy." Like, mm. I, like because I I just saw like what's at the end of the tunnel, mm-hmm. like what's what is the like, huh? So I went to the set and then we shot and I was like just feeling very vacant that day. And then all the shit got canceled and got taken away from me. And that's when I was like, whoa, the fuck am I going to do now? Wow. Ran out of all my money. I did oh, some man. TV shows but burned through all that cash. Yeah. And then uh, and then, cut to I'm working the Miami Improv with Dave Attell. My daughter had just been born. I am out of money. I'm broke. I am officially broke as of April. I'm officially broke with zero money in my bank account. Yikes. Aaron at the Improv booked me with David Tell, Louis C.K., and Daniel Tosh in the Miami and Fort Lauderdale Improvs, or Miami and West Palm Improvs. And Aaron flew me down. She put me up, and I got 800 bucks. I think I'm 800 or 900 bucks a week to feature, which was extra money, but she was doing it because she knew I had a kid and I was broke. Right. That's nice. That's and scary. I was scared as fuck. But I was the happiest I'd ever been. And I was like, okay, so right now I have – I think she advanced me the fucking money because I had just had a kid and I needed to pay for the kid. Yeah. I needed – I like our, our rent was taken care of. But like I was fucking – I was so happy. I was working with David Tell. Right. Was, that's like my hero. Yeah. And I was like, this is, this is what it's about. I have a kid. Like I was – I remember my wife would send me pictures of, 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 my, of Georgia who's now a fucking – you know, fourth grader. And I was just like, oh, dude. So it's like, I don't know where, why, how we got onto this story or what, but just, I would rather be 41 and getting my voice nailed down mm. than fucking 25 in a movie. You know, right. you know, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're lucky with social media because social media, don't let social media run your career. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. don't let your two million follow- followers dictate. Well, now I got to start a theater tour because don't let the it's putting the cart in front of the horse. You know what yeah, I mean? Totally. Keep fucking doing those open mics and staying humble and don't yeah. and like hanging out with comics and don't even mention your fucking vine to them and just fucking doing stand up. It's yeah. stand up such a beautiful art form. And it takes. There's no like. There's no fast track. Like yeah. I'm in a weird position. I have all these fans, <clears throat> and like I did a Vine show with some other Viners. We sold out the Irvine Improv. Um, like I have the ability to draw a crowd. Yeah. But at the same time, I I'm not really ready for that. I am ready for my Vine. I uh, although I am like I can. Here's what I do you, well in front of the Vine Vine audience. Yeah. Well, they well they know your personality. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. So I can, it's, it's pretty easy in front of them. In front of strange audiences, I I still get laughs and stuff but it's yeah. obviously much harder but well, i think that probably has something to do with the fact that you started stand-up in boston and boston's one of the fucking yeah it's like it's learning like learning how to ice skate in helsinki <laughs> yeah it's I brutal. Hope that analogy worked <laughs> uh, helsinki <laughs> i don't know it just seems like somewhere that ice skating's like i get it happens a lot i, I understand that analogy <laughs> <laughs> so um so what is, uh, when what what is like a vine meetup like when you do shows with other viners like who are the top viners? Uh, let's see. Well, there's the tippity top. There's a guy, Nash Greer, who's a 15-year-old. He's just the, – it's the Bieber effect. He's blown up, like, big time. He's got bright blue eyes. Really? Uh, he's number one. Nash? He is, like – he's got a million followers on Twitter. Really? And two million Instagram. He's uh, one of the biggest celebrities right now. Okay, Nash. And he's just a fucking his high school kid. <laughs> Nash Greer. G R I E R. Oh yeah. And you're probably not going to enjoy his videos, but Really? You'll like his glacier blue eyes. That's all that fucking matters. <laughs> oh my god, he's got 5 million fucking followers. Yeah. All right, <laughs> they're going to say, "Oh my god, look at his eyes." <laughs> <laughs> let's see him. All right, here we go, Nash. What does he do? Is he a, a, in a band? No, he's just a, a kid. Really? Yeah. Some people are smooth. 
I like it. That 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 was actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Here with Tim Candles. How you doing? Hey guys, I'm here. We're just eating <laughs> some metal and we're going down and it's going crazy. TMZ. I'm here with Tim Candles. How you doing? Okay. How many likes does that have? Scott, it's uh, 174,000 likes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's him throwing a glass of water. His eyes are beautiful. <laughs> yes. Oh, fucking suck it, Nash Greer. You know what? I had fucking beautiful eyes in high school, but then I got tired. And now I'm just always tired. I got, look, <laughs> I'm going to hit my eyes real quick. What are you doing? I got better eyes than Nash Greer. Yeah, you do, man. Um. So... So Nash Greer is like a fucking top viner. So what's he yeah. going to do? How does he parlay it? Like He's already, so I've heard he's like, Disney's already like bought into him. He's making really? money. People make money on Vine. Like I've been making money on Vine. How? Uh, like integrations with Doritos? Yeah, exactly. Really? Um, I have a Vine agent. Are you agent, shitting me? Agency called Grape Story, yeah. Uh, have you heard of Gary Vaynerchuk, by any chance? No, is he on Vine? No one has. I always ask around. No, he's like an investor dude. But Jerome Jar, the French dude on Vine? <laughs> that is, investor dude. That is so, that's so fucking investor, sketchy investor dude. Like, <laughs> have you ever heard of this guy? I was on his no yacht the other day. He said he's a millionaire. He says he knows you. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I've Googled him. <laughs> so, he's so he's... He's the, the head of Grape Story, which is a Vine agency, and they bring brands to viners so, and also brands come to viners too but brand then, so so did he find you and bring you a brand yeah i'm signed to them and uh I've what's your vines. brands can you I've talk done, about it yeah i've what? done several i've I recently did a vine for ford motors and also did pepsi like big big corporations are you fucking kidding me <laughs> no holy shit yeah the, my pepsi vine was terrible <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. What was your... They controlled it too much. It was a classic case of like... Oh, so they I came didn't... and they told you what they wanted to do and they wanted you to do it. Yeah. They pitched a lot of freedom. And I was like, oh, cool. I can do whatever I want. But then as time went on, it became more and more specific. And then it led to just like a, a vine that I hate. I'm going to do a vine for combos. I fucking love combos. <laughs> yeah, nice. But I don't think they have any money. <laughs> <laughs> no one eats combos except for me. Oh, you know what? I was thinking. Do you still do, do, you still do the... Um, what will the maid, maid think? Yeah. I was thinking about like doing that on Vine. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, the reveal to the maid? Yeah. I did, I did a web series for You Live. Oh, okay. Where uh, they, I, did, I, I rented a hotel room for like a week <laughs> here in Hollywood, and I did a bunch. I did a bunch of really fucking insane ones. Nice. And then I had the room next door to it, and so I'd have the maids come in, and I hit it, put cameras all over the place. Oh, yeah. I did that. Um, I put those up. I, you know, I've, I got so, I was so into them for a while. Right. Um, but it was before Instagram. Like it was like, so it was like, you just put them on Twitter, but it never got that much traction. Oh, really? It, yeah. It, well, it did. Here's the thing. It did randomly one day, like one day randomly, it just exploded and it blew up on in like, uh, in like, um, Norway. Hmm. And and <laughs> yeah, and it blew up in like Norway or Sweden, and and then it fucking went viral because of that. But nice. then and then Good Morning America talked about it and the Today Show, but they didn't credit me. They were like some uh, comedian, and I was like, that's the worst. And so uh, and so yeah, so it never really got like I never really got a payoff. <laughs> I got offered a book deal, but they were like, "Do you think you can do like fifty more?" It was wait. I don't know if I got offered a straight up book deal. I forget how it went. I and I'm, God damn it! I remember when this happened. My agent called and said they wanted to do a book. I think, and <laughs> but they wanted like fifty more. And I was like, I, don't, I can't do fucking fifty more. Right. I, my fucking memory is going, man. I think I got some <laughs> sort of disease. Like nah. I, I literally will freeze in the middle of a thought and just stop and then just. But so wait, so you get that's fucking awesome. So. Now, what about like products like, uh, like say, like what are other opportunities in Vine? Hmm. 
the chance to sell out comedy clubs. Uh, How about selling my book? What can we do a vine with my book? It's right there. <laughs> just, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Do a vine with my book. Just, five thousand bucks. Five thousand bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to my agent. <laughs> I'll talk to him. what's his name, Gary Le- Le- uh, Vanderchuk. Vanderchuk. <laughs> he sounds, sounds like, like a, a MMA fighter. Yeah, sounds like an athlete. Vanderchuk. Um, so uh, I always thought that was I thought it was Brody Stevens from this angle. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No. It's it's, clear, clear, clearly not. You are no, more it's attractive my, than it's he. my book. It's uh, <laughs> uh, it's fucking the uh, fucking exhausting. Right. Yeah. I've, I've heard you talking about that. I've, all I fucking talk about is this goddamn book. Um, Those are it's some thick, bright though. blue eyes, bro. What's that? Those are some nice eyes, dude. I have beautiful eyes, right? <laughs> Suck it. What's his name? Rush Na- Pierre? <laughs> yeah, that's his name. What that's is his name? name? Nash Greer. Nash Greer. So Nash Greer is pretty fucking big. Yeah, he's huge. What's your best vine you've ever done? Uh, like the one where you're just like... There was a vine that blew me up. Give me a big spike. It was a, uh, do you want to dance with me? I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I don't remember that one. It, I just went to a homeless guy and sang that, and he told me to go fuck myself. <laughs> and then after that, he's, all right, so it was, do you want to dance with me? He said, go fuck yourself. Then I turned the camera to me. I said, why won't anyone dance with me? He, and then he said, because I want to fuck you. <laughs> really weird. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that, and I was like, that doesn't make any s- it was like my comedic brain was like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like this won't be good. But like it was so bizarre. Yeah, and uh, it was a catchy melody, so that like went viral on YouTube, and that got me. There was like three days straight where I was refreshing uh, my follower feed. I was getting a follower per second. Really, if not more. It was fuck. It was crazy. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't vined in a little while. But in Instagram, the videos don't pay off the way they do on Vine. No, no, Instagram's no, no. all about pictures. Yeah, Vine is all. Vine is. Interesting too because it doesn't need to make sense for people to like it, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, I know. Um, that's so fucking interesting. Just one. Now, do you have special equipment that you vine with, or do you just no. use your phone? Just my phone. A lot of viners are uh, hacking into it and like editing their stuff, yeah. and then uploading it with music and stuff. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm a pure artist. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably gonna. I'm learn a minimalist, that like that, like that Dutch movement where they that uh, Harvey Harmony Crin got involved with. <laughs> I'm, I'm not familiar, but I, that's all I know because I was obsessed with Harmony Crin when I first moved to New York. Nice. Do you know who Harmony Crin is? No. He did Kids. Did you ever see Kids? Oh yeah. Yeah, he directed Kids. Okay. Or he wrote Kids. I think that movie blew my me mind. Up. I was talking about this last night. I when I saw that, I wasn't sure if it was. I thought I was watching like a duck. I thought it was real. Really? <laughs> yeah. You thought it was like a documentary? I didn't know anything about it. So all of a sudden it was like this very realistic looking life into teenage look into teenage life in in New York, yeah. I just didn't know what to think. I thought like is this fucking real or like I didn't know what I was watching. That I kid, don't, I'm not the kid Casper right is dead. He is? Yeah, he was in he was in the next Friday. Oh, really? Yeah, I've done a lot of research. That movie kind of fucking like just one of those movies that just fucked me up, you mm-hmm. know. Like I literally was like, I when when Casper gets AIDS at the end of the movie, and you're just like you're so like, dark, and you're like, oh my god, he just raped her, and yeah. you're like, oh, oh my god, and then and then I just was like, this is not how a movie's supposed to end. Yeah, like I needed a better Something ending, awful. like in the movie it's about like, uh... time. <laughs> 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 See, I think integrations are genius. I really think, and I think integrations should be done on podcasts. I think there should be integrations of a product like Coors Light. It's a great beer. It's a beer party. It's a beer party. <laughs> Coors guys, Light. It's you guys, a beer party. Do you do that in your stand-up? Do you bring beer party? In yeah, I tell the story behind that. Really? My, my dad came up with that. Wait, what do you mean? <clears throat> he caught me drinking when I was a teenager. This is a long story short. No, 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 no. Tell me the long story. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whoa. It's so weird. When I clear my throat, I sound exactly like my dad, and it freaks me out when you, I do it. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. So it's that's bizarre. It's like Sarah Silverman's joke. The other day, I was licking jelly off my boyfriend's dick, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm becoming my mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> Anyways, be a patty. I was 19 years old, watching the Red Sox with some friends in my kitchen back home. My dad was out to dinner, but he came home early, so... He pulls into the driveway. Uh, my two friends like freak out. They ran out 
ran, ran outside into the bushes, like literally, like it was really stupid. They just should have stayed <laughs> and dealt with it with me. Nineteen-year-old <laughs> solutions to problems are fucking. That's why they shouldn't let. That's they shouldn't let you go to the military until you're twenty-five. <laughs> yeah. They fucking run. Yeah, the idea, like we we had. I remember we were fucking eighteen years old, and we had a twelve pack. My buddy Blake lived on the <laughs> on the fucking like twenty fifth floor of this uh, of this on like the penthouse twenty fifth floor on, on Bayshore of this uh, huge fucking condominium. It was beautiful. I mean, his place was so fucking big. He lived there with his mom. They got, his parents got divorced, and we had a twelve pack of beer we had just gotten, and his mom came to his room. And our theory was just throw it off, throw it over the edge. <laughs> so we threw it over, and we almost killed a man. Oh, like it fucking my. landed inches away from one of the security guards. Oh and he God. was like, and he fucking lost his shit and almost beat us up. He's like, I have a fucking family. You could have killed me. But our theory was just get rid of it. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember. Awesome. Yeah, yeah it was, we, I'd have a very different life. We would have killed a fucker, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, so keep going. I'm sorry. Uh so your dad rolls oh, yeah, in. Yeah, my friends <clears throat> run outside, and I'm just left there with like not even many, just like a few like Budweisers on the coffee table. I'm just thinking like, well, there's nothing I can do. Well, yeah. I'll just <laughs> accept this. And then my dad came in the kitchen, <laughs> and he just like stood, came into the door, just like stopped, looked around, and was like, ah, right. I come home from dinner, and you're having a beer party. <laughs> so like. I heard that. Is that what your dad sounds like? It is, yeah. That's kind of like he, Peter Griffin. Is he from? Is he f- for like from Boston? He's from New Bedford, Mass. Yeah, <clears throat> which has a Boston accent, but it's a little, bit, a little bit different. Boston accent is more like fucking. Uh, I went wicked fucking hard, <laughs> or like I need a driver. Yeah. New Bedford is like I need a driver. It's like. <clears throat> I, did you hear that? I, I heard it a little bit. <laughs> I it's can't more really like, explain it. It's it's a like ah. It ends with a ah. Boston's more a, like a ah. New Bedford's like uh. Okay. I need a drive ah. That's Boston. Drive ah. New Bedford. I think. Yeah. Maybe I'm making this up. But this is the way I hear it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, he said, I "Come home from Disney and you having a beer party." So at that moment, I was scared, but like I knew, like like that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> and then like it became a thing with all my friends. Like it's a beer party. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, whenever I'm drinking a beer, I think in my head like it's a beer party. <laughs> so I it's tr- so funny. I sat next to a guy one time who on a plane who every time he took a sip of his drink he snapped his fingers and pointed. Oh my like, god! Like he'd take a sip and snap and point, and I thought that was so fucking funny that I started doing it. I was doing it right next to him. I was sitting and I was snapping and pointing. And, he's, and he looked at me and goes, I know, right? <laughs> now and you I, got I, it. I'm mocking him, but I then started doing it in earnest. <laughs> like I'd take a sip and, yep, you got it. <laughs> there it is. It's amazing the little thing that like sticks like that and it becomes part of your yeah. – like I was saying, I was saying, I was dissecting the that's what she said this weekend. <laughs> mm-hmm. So is that that's what she said has been around forever. Yeah. And I think that what's happened is – there was a girl at our show who's probably listening to this who used that's what she said every time Fred someone sa- uh, said something. Yeah. And it was it was like it was it, it's fine because we felt like she was mocking it and then she said she wanted to do stand up and in doing stand up she wanted to she was like, "Oh, I'll just I'll use my that's what she said." And I was like, "No, you can't do that in stand up." She goes, "It works." I go, "No, it doesn't work. We're laughing at you." Like we're we're laughing at you, laughing at people who use that. Yeah. Don't you realize that? She's like, no, I use it. What I think happened is that it fell out of graces with people in general, and then people started using it as a reference of a ridiculously bad joke. Right. And then in doing that, it turns into <laughs> it a good into joke a, again. Yeah. And now it's falling back out of graces. That's funny. Does that, does that make sense? I yeah, had someone I in the audience that. this weekend said that's what she said in the middle of one of my jokes, and it killed. And I was like, <laughs> fucking shit. Oh man! But you can't like you know. Steve Carell in the office like made that popular again, and it was out of making fun of a yeah, bad joke. Yeah, exactly. Did you watch the first Office with Ricky uh, the, Gervais? No, I didn't. I, I'm Dude. sorry. I know it's cool. I know it's cool to like that version. But. No, but that is <laughs> the funniest. Is Be- it? Oh yeah, because it. the Office the Office here was good, but it's still very Americanized in that the a lot of things were lost in the subtleties. 
he was so good in the subtleties. Ricky Gervais is a fucking genius. There That's was a good. and the, uh, the joke I'm going to tell you is is not subtle at all, but. Like my, fa- I remember I was with Gary Goldman in. I spent a lot of time with Gary Goldman when I was younger. <laughs> I was with Gary Goldman in uh, Houston, Texas, and we're watching it. And I turned him on, and the joke was, they bring in a corporate trainer to te- to teach them how to deal with angry customers. Mm-hmm. And in doing that, they're showing them how a bad customer would interact. So the guy says to Ricky, um, Ricky Gervais, he does an example of Ricky is he's a bad customer to Ricky. Hold on. God damn it, I can't remember how it goes now. Ah, fuck. You just got to Google it. Just type in <laughs> Ricky Gervais <Okay>. rape. And <laughs> it's, yeah. But it's so funny because Ricky Gervais is trying to be a, an angry customer. And he's like, I've got a problem in my room. And the guy goes, don't care. Don't need to know about it. And he goes, no, I think that you want to know. Not my problem. I think it is your problem. No, it's not my problem. I think it is. Don't care. <laughs> not my problem. I think you could. There's a woman's been raped up there. <laughs> and the guy freezes, and Ricky Gervais turns to the crew, and he goes, "Now be prepared for anything." <laughs> it was he. It was so fucking good. Uh oh, my wife's here. Hey, babe. Hello. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I don't know what she's fucking doing. She had a meeting the, for... Uh, the fuck is your wife doing at your house no, right she, now? She shouldn't be here. <laughs> she shouldn't be here. I told her not to come. Um, so now, so so, what's your plan? Like, you got to... Do you have Do you have a manager? No. You should get a manager. I yeah, mean, how? and I only say this... How? How do and, I do that? Well, you have fucking two million followers on Vine. I guarantee you, if you have someone, take a look at... How has Barry Katz not scooped you up? Yeah, Barry. Come on. I'm, I'm unstoppable. But, like, uh, <laughs> the... You should have someone. Undeniable. You should. The best thing about a manager is they can direct a career. They can take your career and go. You know where, like, uh, you need to be going towards this. This is what we need to you to do, and like, they can get you out where you can get. They should have you featuring with a big name comic. You can help draw for that comic. Yeah. You can probably get a cut of that. Of that, do like a split door deal or something. Or at least get a portion of the sales of tickets for a guy that isn't selling. And then you and him are on the road together, a guy you get along with, Mm -hmm. that you should be on tour. You should be learning that, uh, learning how to like – you should be literally doing stand-up every fucking weekend on the road. You're young. You could totally do it. They should be – they should also – I mean I think you should audition for like SNL. Audition for SNL. How do you know how to go about doing that? How? Like Lauren Michaels has contacted – a Viner, Simone Shepard. Uh, she's a Viner. She was is she black. Yep, it's a black woman. It's, it's, yeah, it's not. That doesn't count. Right. Yeah. No, I mean he, it that, was, count. that was their goal too. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that. They got in a lot Politically, of trouble for that. Yeah. And for those of you who are wondering what we're talking about, Lauren Michaels said, "I need a black funny woman," as opposed to a funny woman. And so, what happened was, they ended up taking quote, literally. <laughs> I think it kind of backfired on because everyone was like, well, why wouldn't you just pick the funniest person? When did it become a race issue? And so... Just drop he, some Oreos. Don't worry about it. Um, I'll pick it up after. Yeah. But yeah, you should... You should. Uh, you, sh- you know what you should be doing is doing your fucking... Have your... You know, figure out the base of what an audition set is for Saturday Night Live. It's like five minutes. Right. It's like three characters. minutes, five characters. Let, get let get me, your characters. I have some interesting uh, insider info about the SNL thing. Um, so I've heard that Simone Shepard, uh, she's a black girl on Vine. She came down to her and the girl who's on now. And rumor has it that uh, Lauren chose the girl on the show now because she's darker skinned and Simone was too light skinned. Are you fucking and, serious? And supposedly SNL was uh, afraid that People would think like, oh, you chose the most light-skinned black person. See, that's the thing with racism. Is yeah. Once you try to act not racist, you start becoming racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the you one- become like ignorantly racist. Yeah, like when you go, oh, no. Like when you'd hear... I think we should call them African-Americans. Like yeah. shit like that. Exactly. It's like once you start overthinking it, you're being racist. Mm-hmm. You're treating them differently. That's what they don't... No one wants to be treated differently. You know? Right. It's... uh it's it's the same with everything. I mean, the thing is, no one treats me differently. They just treat me like a regular fucking person. Yeah. And that's what everyone else wants. And once you go, well, we got to pick the darker one because what are people going to think? You're not treating her like a fucking human being. You're treating her like something 
But the same sense that happens in stand up, like if you're like you're booked for a show, I'm sure they're like, all right, we got. Uh, I'm sure, th- like you book a show, you're like it's good to have a black dude. It's good to have a black guy. Get a woman in there. Yeah, but that's I not don't really think, racist, think, but it's like yeah, but I don't think of something. I don't know if anyone does that. No, really, no. I, I mean, I, I don't think they do in like Hollywood. Okay, like I don't think anyone's like. I think the funniest people get on stage, and I think the funniest people you're yeah, gonna find it's yeah. gonna be a it's gonna be a. Uh, I mean, I say that, and I'm sure right now some black dude's losing his fucking mind going, no, 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 no. They only book white guys because it is a lot of white guys. Yeah, but I think there's a lot, a lot of white guys doing stand-up. I think it's yeah. proportionate to what they have in the in the, in the the pot. So, like, you're going to get one woman, probably four white dudes, a black dude, and... and Latino like, dude. Yeah, yeah, but, but, like, I think Latino's kind of, like, it's not what it used to be. You know, like, it used to be, like, uh, like the Latin kings Some of comedy, genre, yeah, yeah. Now it's just like Al Madrigal's Latino, but he doesn't yeah. fucking talk about it, right? You know, but he's but like if they used to do a Latino show, showcase, Al would always be putting the Latino one. He's like, wait, wait, why can't I just be regular? <laughs> That's funny. So like, uh, like yeah, it's like think of all the Latino guys doing stand up that you don't even really they're I mean they don't it doesn't really matter, you know, right? Um, right. But yeah, I think I think it'll be proportionate usually. Like I I like. It's a, a lot of white dudes, though, now that I say that. Yeah. I mean, like, I know that like, I'm a straight white dude. I'm one of so many. Fortunately, I have this Vine popularity, so that gives me an edge. But I'm one of many straight white men. Yeah. Granted, I'm much more adorable than most. Yeah. Oh, hands down. <laughs> you do look fresh. I can't believe really? you spent the whole night out because you do I not look. Slept. You do not look uh, none the fucking... Like if I was out, like I was out, I flew in late last night from the from the East Coast. I was a fucking hot mess this morning. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, I didn't sleep. I I get anxiety attacks in the middle of the night now. Oh, for shit. Some fucking reason. And it's when you start getting older and you start looking at life a little more uh, tangently, and you're like, you're like, oh, so there is an end to this. Yikes! And that yeah. end could be tomorrow. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Like, and I got kids, and there's a lot. Like, there's a lot riding on me being alive. And you start, I like that just wakes me up in the middle of the night, and then I start thinking. Like I had a little bit of a sinus cold, but I thought that's what a stroke feels like. <laughs> Fucking yeah! And then I'm you like, you sound like one of my buddies, my comedian, comedian buddy Will Noonan. He just had like a, a feeling on his tongue, like a, he thought he had a bump on his tongue. He like obsessed about it for days, and then he like went to a, a dentist, <laughs> and they're like, it, you're, "You're fine. It's a, it's a muscle in your tongue." Yeah, but like, he was free, like he was telling me like. All right, just just for real. Like, do you think this is cancer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that constantly. And I was like, I mean, as far I, I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I should I should have said like, no, it's not. That's the best thing about when you get comics that are that were doctors first, like uh like Matt Eisman. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Matt Eisman is uh was uh I said Eisman. Matt Eisman, it was a is a stand-up. Iceman. But he was a doctor <laughs> in Denver. So he's like a or Dr. Ken. The right guy from the Hangover. Yeah. yeah, they're real fucking doctors. Right. And every time I've ever worked with either of them, I have I'm like, <laughs> okay, here we go. I think I have throat cancer. Take a look. I wonder how many comedians are just always oh. on them. Oh, I guarantee you, Matt's diagnosed a ton of genital herpes, <laughs> a ton of genital warts. Like just comics going, I got something on my dick, Matt. Take a look at it. That's funny. But yeah, Matt's a great guy. Really funny too. But cool. like I love working with those guys. Yeah, you need a manager. You need a manager. Who's big coming out of Boston? Like, what's the next generation coming out of Boston? Uh, there's a dude named Matt D. He's gonna be big. Yeah, he's he's hilarious. He's like a one liner, uh, kind of alternative comedy. Who else? Will Noonan. Um, who's your group? Who's the group of guys you hang out with? Because be, of these names, probably five of them will all like. I mean, it's the way it always works. It's like you start with a bunch of guys, and then some guys get into different parts of the business. But like yeah. my my freshman class, like that I started with, was like uh, was like like in the in the group of guys that I'd say that like were at the same pace as I was in New York when I started. I mean, I started first night I started. I did stand up with Dimitri Martin. Like nice. that, me and him were on the same show, and so was that guy John Beamer, and David J. Nash. Now David J. just sold that that show. He's from Boston. He sold that show. Um, I don't know if you've seen the promos. It's on NBC of the Blind Dad growing up Fisher. No, I haven't seen it. It's a new goddamn. I fucking booger in my nose. Um, Go for it. It's a new uh, sitcom, and it's David J.'s dad was blind. So um, 
so th- that like so in that class, like me and Dimitri are still doing stand up. David J just stopped doing stand up and started. He sold a sitcom to CBS that I was in. We've shot it, and then he liked the production side more than the acting side. Mm-hmm. So he kept producing and kept writing. Got got on a bunch of shows, and now that's what he's doing. So of these names, you said you'll say. There, it'll be neat in history. People will go, oh shit, I heard that name on first <laughs> podcast 10 years ago. That's the guy with the movie. So awesome. who's who's your group? My group is Will Noonan. <clears throat> he's he'll, he's going to keep at it, and I think he'll, he'll, he'll be big. Yeah. Uh, Will Noonan. There's Matt D, who's not really in my crew, but he's, he's going to be a name for sure. Um, I love John Paul Rivera. He's like hardcore, like open mic host, like super funny yeah uh shit there's matt kona i think he'll be somebody yeah (laughs) (laughs) uh fuck man it's hard it's hard to pick people oh all right andrew derso shout out shout out to andrew derso yeah he's he's, uh so enjoy he's so likable like everyone in boston loves this kid and he's just fucking hilarious. I can't really explain it. What was the guy's name that does one-liners? Matt D's? Matt D, yeah. Matt space D. Just D? Yep. Just the letter D? Yeah. Oh, there's a good-looking Matt D. Yeah, he's not bad. No, no, no. The, no, the, I spelt it wrong, but there's oh. another Matt D from Australia. <laughs> Matt D from Boston is nerdy-looking. Yeah. Stand-up comedy. Comedy Central stand-up. You ready? Yeah. Let's listen to a little bit of his stuff. Guys, let's break out a new entertainer right oh, here. Oh, shit. Right now, he's like, don't do that one. Is he black? <laughs> no. I might have the wrong guy. Does he look black? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Are you sure? He's white with glasses. Wait, he's white. Is this him? That... That's a... What? That doesn't look like him. It kind of does. Maybe that's just a weird headshot. Is that... <laughs> Hang on... <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> this isn't him. <laughs> this can't be him. He's on Twitter. Uh, uh, has he been to the Glasgow Comedy Festival? He might have. Okay, here we go. Tell me if this is him. Sure. Fucking come on, Comedy Central. From the New York Comedy Festival. That's him. Okay, all right, we're going to let it build up. That reminds me of another name. The, I wonder what the logistics of playing other comics' bits on your podcast, I wonder what the legal logistics of this is. <laughs> right. Well, Matt, hopefully you're, hopefully if he's any if like a regular comic, he's going, I appreciate you playing one of my bits on your show. I bet, I bet yeah. So we'll let it load. I don't want to stop it right in the middle. There's another name, Dan Crone. Dan Crone. And... Uh... Yeah, he's been around forever. He was on WTF once. That was like a big deal in Boston. Really? Yep. WTF's a big. Uh, it's a big. It's a good podcast. He was on a live one, which isn't as cool, but still very cool. <laughs> it's amazing how our <laughs> brains will justify success and like, but kind of but, put it in check. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I did one of those, but it was a live one. I didn't get to do my one on one where I walked through my entire arc <laughs> yeah. of my career and stand up and what happened. All right, let's see. It's still loading, Matt. Well, we'll see the punch set up, maybe. I don't want it to stop loading. All right. All right, we'll let it load. Sure. Um, yeah, I listened to the last one he did with... Uh, do you listen to a lot of podcasts? I'm addicted to podcasts. Really? Favorite I, podcast? Like I had a, a thought the other week where I needed to take the headphones off, and like I was like, whoa, all right, hold on. I have my own thoughts. Yeah. And I was like, I'm addicted to podcasts. Yeah. And I am. Like, I, I'm uncomfortable walking around without headphones and, like, comedy podcasts going on. Uh, I listened <laughs> to the one with Rogan and War Machine. Have you listened to that? War Machine? Uh, Fucking genius. Was it recent? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know when I'm putting this up, so you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it was. It was, like, last week. I um, must have heard it at, at some capacity. And then but. Marin did Billy Gardell. I fucking loved that one. Billy Gardell oh, was like released the other day. Billy Gardell's uh, on Mike and Molly. Oh, he's a comedian from Pittsburgh, oh. or from New York, really, but or from Tampa, Florida, really. But actually, yeah, since I've been in LA, I haven't 
listen to any podcast. Yeah, Billy Gardell was good. Ron White, he did one with Ron White. Yeah, I was listening to that last night. All right, let's start playing this, see where we're at. Matt D. I don't want to give you the wrong idea. I like to smoke pot. Uh, I like to smoke pot and order a pizza. My favorite thing about smoking pot and ordering a pizza is sometimes I'll forget I ordered the pizza. (laughs) It's like getting myself the best surprise present ever. (laughs) Excuse me, sir, did you order this pizza? (gasps) Oh my God. (laughs) It's exactly what I wanted. I know me so well. I wish I could. It's funny. It's really funny. I wish I could uh, write one-liners. I know. I can't for the life of me. I have one. You have one? Can you critique it for me? Of course. It's too long. That's the that's the the key to one liners is getting is uh, is what is it? Uh, cons- fucking con- rhythm. It's well, sure. it's rhythm, I guess. Yeah, but it's like it's the cons- I'm trying to say conservation of words, like not the le- the least words the best. What's the what's the joke? All right, it's it's too many words, and uh, it's. It's a great way to start it, by the way. <laughs> by the way, this for the record, this is exactly how I'd start on stage. I've got a one-liner, guys, but it's got way too many words, but I'm just going to tell it to you anyway. So just know that I already know it has too many words. Would you do that? And, oh, yeah. Oh, that's I do exactly that too. how I'd I do, do that, that too. Then, then I say, like, maybe I shouldn't have just said maybe, that. This is already too many words. Do you see my problem with talking? I say, like, I am clearly... Okay, let's just start it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. So you so you use that. I, yeah, I would do that in a part. My I believe in sta- I believe stand up should be such a genuine reflection of your personality. Right. right. I, I did I did something this weekend that was a lot of fucking fun. I want to hear your joke. But what I did is I took an old joke and I broke down how stand ups will take an a, a, a take a real event and spike it to make it look to make it funnier. Oh yeah. And then so I took a story an old joke I have about. Um, about being in a grocery store with my wife and saying, get a thin cucumber, and if you're going to put a vegetable up a girl's ass, don't use a cucumber, use a carrot. Cucumber's too aggressive. Carrot is more like, is more like yeah. hello. So <laughs> I, did, I broke down the whole joke, and I explained all of it, and I went into like greater detail, and it did better, less... Less, uh, less spiked when I told the true story of how that real mm-hmm. interaction happened. It was a true story, but when you tell it, you it's you make it bigger. Right. This woman comes up and goes, "Excuse you, sir," but that in real life, the woman just went, "That's inappropriate." <laughs> and I went, and I, I jokingly said, uh, "I'm putting in her ass, not in mine." And so, <laughs> sh- but I'm so I'm obsessed with, right now with t- taking it all apart and trying to put it back together. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So like, I don't have a problem with you saying. I have a fucking very wordy, like this conversation would be interesting on stage. I believe, right? You know, but you got to get to a place where you you know how to do that right. in an honest place and not doing it like a bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. So wait, what's the one liner? Uh, it is. I hate jogging so much that I'm going to start wearing American flag pants. Because that way, if my friends ask me to go, I can say, "Sorry, these colors don't run." <laughs> Do you hate it? Is that no, that suck? I, no, I don't. I don't hate it. <laughs> I don't. Hate I don't it. like it. But it's <laughs> these colors. I would drop the mic after that. <laughs> these colors don't run. But I'm, yeah, I usually. If you're not laughing, America. yeah. If you're not laughing, you don't. Then you don't love America. <laughs> I used to fucking exactly. Yeah, yeah, I love. I say like I'm not lazy, or yeah, I'm not lazy. I'm a patriot. Yeah, I'm not lazy. I'm a patriot. And that gets a laugh sometimes. <laughs> it's uh, I mean, it's it's you're gonna write a lot of jokes like that when you're young in comedy, where you'll write and they'll be, they're like filler to get you to like 20 minutes or whatever, you know, or like yeah, filler yeah. to get you to an hour. Like my, I had a bunch, I had a bunch like that, man. I I wanted to be a one liner so bad and I couldn't. Yeah, do I it. wish I could. Um, my my one was uh, uh, how do you think someone becomes an abortion doctor? Is there really someone in med school thinking, well, I want to work with kids, but like that was mine. And I, <laughs> and I, I, cause I wanted to be able to do that. I still to this day, like, like, uh, I find that one liners are good for tweets. Yeah. So then I'll tweet sure. them and then I'll just never use them. Right. But then, then I'll use them. Like, like one of the, tw- one of my best probably tweets that I've had this year was, uh, I learned a very valuable lesson. Never tickle a child with diarrhea in your bed. Uh, <laughs> And then, but then I turned it into a bit where I went, where I walked with, it's another thing. It's like, Patrice O'Neill told me, he was like, you're not, you're not like a joke, joke comic. 
like when I would try to write one liners, yeah, he was like, "That's not who you are. You're better when you're telling the story about it. So stay in the story. Stay in the like. If you need, if you want to tell the joke to get into the story, that's fine. But don't just write the joke and get out of there. Tell me the story. I want to hear the story. And I had a joke about touching a cop's face. Like, you know, what cops hate when you touch their faces. Uh-huh. And then. I started walking through the story of how that happened, and that was the funny part for me. So then I stopped getting out of the the setups punch Mm -hmm. and just getting into the story part. Like, and 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 that's kind of interesting. But like that was a that like so. But the other day I worked on that uh, the um, tickling. I go, I tickle her. She shits the bed. She starts crying. My wife's yelling. The dog's trying to eat it. That's when I realized (laughs) we're not ready for the apocalypse. Like you know, like zombies were fucked. (laughs) So, but. uh, Dog's trying to eat it. Yeah, we have a bull mastiff that's in the hospital right now. Oh, right. It's been in the fucking hospital. I saw that. Sorry about that. No, it's fine. It's fucking twenty fucking thousand dollars a day. Holy so I'm shit. going through so much fucking no, money with this dog. No, it's it's, it's it's no, it's uh, we're gonna be like we're gonna be uh, have spent a lot of money on this dog. Wow. Yeah, like definitely a lot. Like could have bought a car could have, <laughs> in cash. Just dropped it on the fucking table. <laughs> There's no financing it. Drop the mic. So um, so ten years from now, where do you see yourself? Oh boy, good question. Successful stand-up comedian, making a living off of that. And if TV and would SNL like, comes would you, along, would you like to? What would you rather do? Uh, sitcom, hosting a show, or or uh, or sketch comedy? We won't say SNL because everyone's going to go. Oh, I'll take SNL because then I'll also be a movie star. But like right. like sketch comedy, sitcom character. Or like hosting a show, like uh, like on fucking Spike, or you know, or something. My instincts tell me sketch. I haven't experienced sitcom or hosting. Yeah. I would love a sitcom too, man. Fucking sitcoms are amazing. I would also like to be in movies as well. I grew up worshiping Jim Carrey. Like, yeah, I'm not expecting that career, but if I could, like. Make a kid like I was like Jim Carrey like changed my life. If I could like do that to yeah. some young person, that'd be but fucking it, amazing. It, it won't. You'll, it, it's, it, it won't. It'll never feel like that. <laughs> oh wait, it'll never feel like that. It'll never feel to like me. that. You will. You will never feel what that the feeling the feeling you had for him, mm-hmm. and you were like, God damn it, and the realization you believe that maybe he had going god i can't believe these kids fucking i like, like bill murray bill murray was my guy uh-huh. like i was like god if i could ever be like fucking bill murray and just have kids fucking worship me and and me define their sense of humor like he defined right. my sense of humor he defined my character how i act and interact in society is based on bill murray and stripes <laughs> like him and Caddy, like not Caddyshack as much but like i quote <laughs> like bill murray the way he carried himself in every fucking movie that's yeah, the way I awesome. I wanted to be funny like that. I wanted to be lighthearted. Ghostbusters. Like, I Hell wanted yeah. to be that character in life. Um, but, so cut to, I have a show called uh, Hurt Burt. Yep. And our ratings are fucking through the roof for the wrong demographic. It's ratings for young boys, but that's not what they wanted. Uh-huh. They wanted, no one wants the young boys unless you're Comedy Central. They wanted the upscale family. Same thing happened with Travel Channel with Birth of mm-hmm. Conqueror. My ratings with young boys was through the fucking roof. Like young got young young boys, very young kids were in love with Birth of Conqueror. <laughs> very young kids. <laughs> but it, I was always like, I wanted to have like college kids, you know, like college kids going like, fuck. So I go do a college tour like Tosh, you know. Yeah, yeah. But but no, it's never gonna feel like you think it's gonna feel like, you know. Now I don't I don't know who. I know my fan base looks like, but even when you do something like uh, like you see read these stories about what a great dude Bill Murray is, have you read any of those online? No. Apparently, he'll just fucking go pick up and party with you and go to your house <laughs> and drink with you and your friends. I heard some story, which I could be getting it totally wrong, but on a podcast that Bill Murray sometimes that does these real life bits, where I I could be getting this really wrong, but I heard that he went into a liquor store, like. Uh, Maybe like poured a bottle out. This is probably totally false. Poured a bottle out in onto the floor, put the bottle down, and then said to the store owner, "Like no one will ever believe you." 
Yeah. <laughs> like as we said, Bill Murray came in and yeah, a, I, that, that no seems like something. <laughs> there, there's like there's a there was a thing going around like uh, the other day. It was like 15 reasons Bill Murray's the coolest guy ever. Apparently, like he went back to someone's house. Like someone said they wanted an autograph, and he goes, "I'm not going to give you a fucking autograph. I'll shoot a short film with you." And they were wow. like, "What?" And he's like, "Yeah, we'll shoot a short." And they're like, Fine. "What are you going to do?" And he goes, "Let's do a slow motion walking together." So we're all walking <laughs> together, and we'll do it in slow motion. Have you ever you never seen that? No, no. Uh, it, but, let's see if I can find it online. I should have a computer right now. It'd be a lot more helpful than this fucking just going on my cell phone. <laughs> um, Bill, let's, I love this fucking Bill Murray slow mo walking. Bill Murray, slow mo, <laughs> slow mo, slow mo, slow. Okay, here we go. Watch Bill Murray take some fans on a West West Anderson style slow mo. So apparently, I'm sure this is on here. Bill Murray is the best for reasons. Only digital imps that run Reddit know. The following video of Bill Murray, Bill Murray walking in slow motion with a group of fans is circulating around the web. Why? To quote the legend, it just doesn't matter. Apparently, these kids wanted an autograph and he said, fuck an autograph, I'll just let you do this. So they just taped him. They did all this. Like it's a Wes Anderson trailer. Right. Like, and that's just Bill Murray walking with guys. No one's in costume. It fucking, the internet sucks. But, like, no one's in costume. They're all clearly at a school, I'm guessing. That's awesome. Fuck. Oh, fuck it. Oh, fuck it. All right. But, yeah, it's, oh, it's a, everyone, what a fucking payoff. But there's a, but it's Bill Murray walking in slow-mo, and apparently that's what he just did. That's I funny. think that's fucking amazing. That's awesome. I'd love to do that. Like I did, I'd love to be that famous that I could do stuff like that, and it would go around, and people would go, "Oh, right. how cool is Burt Kreischer?" I know, yeah. but you know, I always hear how Tom Hanks is awesome. Really, just like super down to earth. I don't have any like stories about it, but yeah, I've heard. Uh, I like when people diva out. Like I yeah. like seeing that where they fall apart. Yeah, like Kellen Winslow's. I listened to Kellen Winslow, the fucking wide receiver. Uh, oh, I don't know. Kellen Win- Great, now it starts playing. <laughs> fucking, my phone is fucked. Um, Kellen Winslow, I listened I listen to him freak out on his dad on the phone. I'm a grown man, daddy. Or whatever he said. <laughs> but like he was fucking yelling on the phone and like clearly causing a scene. Hey, but, how, how about the whole, remember the Mel Gibson phone call? Oh, yeah. What, what happened to that? I think no one I, talks about that. Yeah, no, no. was there a conclusion? What, what where he just called the chick the N word? Yeah, I yeah. don't think so. <laughs> I think he <laughs> it was just like a huge working. deal on podcast. And then it was like, all right, well, done with that. Wait, how long ago was this? This was a while this ago, like, right? Yeah, three or four years ago. Yeah, I don't think. I think he just stopped working. Yeah, I think he stopped <laughs> working. And I think he just started drinking again and just staying to himself. Yeah, he's got so much fucking money. Yeah, I mean, Passion of the Christ. Let's just not like Apocalypto is an amazing fucking movie. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I literally lost my shit watching Apocalypto. Yeah. I will watch any movie he makes. Yeah, I don't care what his politics are. He makes good fucking movies, and it does. It's not about his politics. It's just about right. cool shit. Like I fucking yeah, I totally. You think you'd like making a movie? Like making one, acting in one, or Ma- like making it, like writing it, directing it, starring in it. Yeah, I bet I would if once I had the vision for it. But I, I would not, and I'll tell you why. I think I would I think I think that I would think it would be a great idea at the beginning, but I would put <laughs> so little effort into it. I would oh fuck! I'd put so much little so little effort into it that it would just suck dick. Right. Like right. at the end, I'd just be judgmental. I want I want to get back to one thing sure. you were saying. How it's cool for Bill Murray to talk to fans. One thing I've was really surprised by is how cool comedians are like i'm here right now like big name comedians are really nice to like open micers well yeah because i I think that i you know what that's interesting but i think that we just remember what it's like and we're like i was like i remember fucking 
I remember David Tell and Louie and and guys that I fucking idolized taking the time to explain things to me. That's awesome. Like I was on uh, Robert Kelly's You Know What Dude podcast. Well, he's not a very big comic, but <laughs> <laughs> you know what, dude? dude. I fucking love Bobby. He's I love awesome. Him. I talked to him on the phone before I did my first podcast, and I was like, uh, I'm a little nervous. Like, I'm just not in the same league as you guys. He was like, dude. Dude, you're one of us. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, you're a comic, aren't you? And I was yeah. like, yeah, I mean, for four months. He was like, dude, you're one of us, dude. So uh, that was like... He's an amazing that guy. That was like, like my first introduction to like big names. And yeah. he was fucking awesome. Bobby, um, I, I've called Bobby a lot. I've called Bobby... A nut. He's actually one of my go-to guys to call when I'm going through something. Yeah, and he's really like open about like, dude, call me. Call he's me if you need me. Very open. He's a great person. He's sober. So you're never yeah. gonna get him like on a fucking bad day. Right. Like he right. has bad days, but he's never you're never gonna get him like on a But yeah, man, I think that's the coolest thing. Rogan, I've I've talked to him a number of fucking times. Nice. The comics comics, um I feel like I feel like I'd be scared around Joe. Is he yeah. I feel like maybe he's not No, no, he's the sweetest guy in the world. Is fuck he super world. friendly? Oh my god. I he think is... maybe the way he treats Brian sometimes, I'm like, oh, maybe he's not no, 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 no. Well, Brian and him have known each other for fucking right. twenty some odd years. I, I love when they have when they go at arguments. it. I yeah, know. Yeah. Joe, I know. I've heard Joe say like, anyone who likes these arguments <laughs> is a silly bitch. Or like, yeah. No, I was listening. I was like, oh, I, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Brian and Joe have known each other a long time, and so whenever they, you know, whenever they get into it on the podcast or whatever, I, I always just go, "This that's literally." It, you're listening to two good friends. That's why I like when I, hearing that. It's like yeah. an inside to their friendship. I was actually on a Death Squad podcast just yesterday. Oh, really? It's fucking awesome. In, I, bumped uh, into Brian, I bumped into Red Band at the comedy store, and he's how I heard about Vine. So I was like, uh, excuse me, Brian, uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, <laughs> I'm popular on Vine. And he actually knew me from Vine. Like He yeah. eventually recognized me. Like, so did you go down to the Death Squad Studios East? I went to the Pasadena Ice House. Yeah, the Death Squad Studios East. Is it? <laughs> yeah, technically. Death Squad Studios East. <laughs> technically. Um, who was there? Is uh, it the creepy room with the fucking mannequins and the... Yeah. Fucking, that room scares me sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's trippy. Uh, Missy Martinez was there, a porn star. Have you seen her work? You She's know, a stand-up. Right. She's she funny, started, too. Uh, I got there. I didn't know who she was. And you were like, who's this fucking um, hot-ass chick? And then I was like, you on Vine? Because I thought maybe she's a Viner. She yeah. Like, yeah, I am. It's like not safe for work. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, those are my favorite Vines. That's when I started following Jesse Andrews on Vine. Dude, I'm terrified of revining one of those by mistake. Oh, yeah. And it goes on my page. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you So, did... like, I, like, try not to, like, look at those because, like, I can easily revine that by mistake. Fuck. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, I started following porn stars on Vine. Porn stars on Instagram suck dick. I not mean, literally not they don't they're bad at instagram <laughs> it's like right right bunch of tops oh which top should i wear tonight oh fuck fuck, fuck you. i'm gonna get back into vine i haven't fucking posted i have more followers on vine than i have on instagram how many followers on vine do you have i have probably like sixteen thousand or something cool but i don't i, I haven't vined in maybe a year <laughs> if that's probably possible i'm gonna it's find under some, a year but yeah um all right. Well, uh, so so when are you moving out here? Soon, man. I need to. Uh, you need to. Okay, I'm going to tell you. This is my two cents. This is, should be your plan. Get a, hooked up with a manager. Okay. Well, how how do I do that? Uh, I'll call my management today and tell them to take a look at your Vine. Cool. Okay. And <laughs> say he's got two million Vine followers. Uh, I'll talk to. It'll be like one of the like one of the. Um, Day to day managers, like one of the no, I say, not lower, every manager is equal, but it won't be like you know the the people who own the company. Right, but get right. one of those on your on your side. They have a bunch of people that work for the company that can kind of throw work your way. And uh, I'll talk to them and I'll I'll tell them to take a look at your vines. Awesome. Say he's a stand up. He's moving out here and when. <laughs> uh, Do it. You got to pull the trigger. Ago. You got to fucking pull the trigger every day. You yeah. don't. And now Boston's a great fucking place. So. It's a great it's place not, to become a comedian. It's a great place to become a comedian. But I've been in L.A. for a week and a half, and I've been way more busy than I have been in like six months of Boston or hey, New York. Shut that door. He's going to start blowing in a second. Okay, I po- this fucking... I posted a Vine saying I was performing in, in L.A., then I got a bunch of emails. I'm like, hey, I'm a comedian. I see you're in L.A. Let me put you on a show. Yeah. And it's like business people are like, let's have a lunch. <laughs> let's do lunch. Yeah, well, L.A.'s that, you know... 
Uh, LA's that here. I'll do it right now. What are you doing? I'll fucking call my manager. <laughs> awesome. Not, there were. I'll call. I'll call Reg. Say so this kid's gonna be a star. This is how it should work. By the way, for everyone listening, this is how this business should work. Uh, Reg, please. Let's put her on speaker. Reg Tigerman's office. Hey, is Reg in? Hey, Bert. He's on a plane headed back. Um, I'll have him in about two hours. Can I get? A, can I leave a voicemail for him? Absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll send oh. you through to it. Oh wait. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Or I could take a message. Yeah, I was just about to say I could just leave it with you. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Tell him there's a guy there's a guy I'm with I'm doing a podcast with his name's he's on Twitter on uh, Vine his name's Rye R Y Dune D O O N uh-huh. uh, he's moving out here in September he's a comic and tell him to just take a look at him and uh, and I'll set him up if he wants to meet him nice okay I will let him know take a look at his Vine right now he's got like two yeah minutes. I'm gonna do it right now okay all right cool <laughs> Fun. okay all, all right, right bye all right bye see Dude, that's how easy this business th- is thank you so much I yeah, don't mention it man. It's not, it's, I don't know why it, like it's, I mean, the the truth is, why wouldn't they, I've done it for a lot of comics that I've worked with on the road, I go, yeah, let me put together a tape, put it online, I'll send it to my manager and let them look at it. It should work that way. It should be that easy. Why wouldn't I want you to have management? Why wouldn't I want you to succeed? There's that mentality in this business of, I I want to succeed, but I want everyone else to fail is fucking loser behavior. I want you to fucking succeed. You know, and goddamn it, be a movie star. And then when I'm fucking 50 and I'm not working, you're like, let me throw a bird a bone. <laughs> like Adam Sandler does to all those guys. And yeah, you're like, yeah. I haven't seen them in a while. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah. And it's all, it's your career. It's now, they'll look at your vine. They'll go, oh, wow, he's funny. They'll reach out to you. If you like him, you like him. If you don't, you don't. But now when you come out, this is what you got to do. And this is the, anyone who's thinking about being a comic. And I know there's a lot of people that want to be comics that listen to this podcast. This is what you do. You move out. To, I, I, I do believe you have to be in New York or L.A. Those are my. Yeah. That's. I do yep. believe that 100. percent But you got to remember that I'm not saying that that's your calling. That was mine. That's what I did. So I'm telling you what I did. So like sure. for me, I, I wouldn't have moved to Austin. However, I'm just telling you what I did. You should have a a a, a writing treatment. So like talk to Reg, and if you guys decide to get to work together or whatever, say hey, can you send me a writing package? So I can maybe get a job writing jokes on a late night talk show. Have one of those written. It's always great when you have material for them, like a script. You should have a seven minute tape, like a, a tape of you, so you can get on Comedy Central. Yep. And if you can do it, put a twenty two minute tape together for a half hour presents. Get headshots. You're not going to really get headshots until you get out here, but get into fucking acting classes. Someone right. told me I'm taking an improv class right now. Yeah, improv class is fucking great. Yeah, take cool. a class because it just keeps you loose. It keeps you prepared, and you build a body of 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 practice underneath you, like a body of like I know how to do this. And then when you go in for auditions, you're confident and you're comfortable, and you can kill it. And right. you're at the age where they can send you out fucking four times a day. Everything's you can play a little older, you can play a little younger, right, right. and you can play your age. Me, I just play like dads. Yeah. You know, like I'm gonna be a dad on something or nothing. You know, or a fucking drunk uncle. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, fun uncle. That should be you know that should be your path. And and, and dude, pull the trigger. You and your chick need to make the decision to fucking come out here and we, do it. We both know it. Yeah, she she wants to move. I'm not saying that the vine is the end of your. Of of like this isn't the end all be all, but and I'm holding up my phone as I'm doing it. But the but what it is is it's the canary in the mine of oh there's something there, right? Like it's the first sign. You, the, the vine isn't going to be the end of the road for you. What no, it should be is that first not. sign that you go oh shit I got something to offer people, and I'm and it's working. Let me try that on another scale or on another right. platform. I think you're going to be a fucking dude. You you know you got a good start. I think. <laughs> and you're a really nice guy. Thanks. Thanks. One thing I took from all these podcasts I listen to is that just being nice is huge. Dude, it is the biggest. And I am, I don't fake it either. Like, I am genuinely a nice person. Yeah. And I'm concerned about how people, I, I like to be liked. I, Are you yeah. that way too? I'm aggressive about wanting to be liked. <laughs> like it's caused big problems in my fucking development as a man. Like I'm, I'm probably gonna walk away after this podcast and be like, oh man, I, I bet 
when I first got here, I said, like, I think I'm a little bit drunk right now. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Then I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh, is he mad? <laughs> no. Dude, I, my, I've, I've, I, know, I, I haven't done sober radio in probably five years. I, I figured I'd be safe with you because... I, I there's one thing... Fucking this blower's driving me nuts. Be, I'm sorry, I used to guys. be them. Really? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, man. Hey, you want to finish up the yard with them? <laughs> no, I gotta fucking. We gotta wrap this up because I've got to pick up my daughter from school. Sure. And I've got oh, to. I've got to shit. try to. Uh, I've tried to. Got to try to explain to him what I need done in the backyard. Um, <laughs> this guy is. Uh, he doesn't listen to podcasts, thankfully, but he's a horrible <laughs> yard dude. <laughs> that's he's funny. just old, and I don't feel like he's got a fixed income, and I don't feel like I should. I don't have the right to let him go. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I don't. You can always. I always say this to my f- people I know. You can do two things. You can act like a fucking ass in front of me, drunk, because I've been there, and I, and you, I will always accept apology the next day, and I will always understand the next day. And you can always fucking dr- anything drinking. I never judge because I've done it so much my entire life that you black, I. Do you black out? Oh yeah. Yeah, I talk about that in my stand up as, yeah. as well. Oh yeah. What is? Uh, let fucking me see if I had my blackout joke. Um, I'm sure I had a blackout joke. David, tell it the best one. You ever blackout, or as I call it, time traveling? You, you pass no out. Oh shit! Really? Yeah. yeah. Is that your I joke? Had that same ex- no, I. <laughs> but I had that same exact thought like a couple yeah. years ago. I tweeted it. Time blacking out was like some people call it blacking out. I call it time travel. Yeah. Oh well. I yeah. <laughs> well, you're never gonna beat a tell to a joke. You just just know it, <laughs> okay. and just go, and just when it's brought up to you by someone, just go. Well, lost that one. Yeah. All right. Well, that looks like to be the end of this podcast. Hold on one second. Hello? Hey, Scott. Is something going on? Yeah. Can, oh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. I'm doing a podcast. Can, uh, I'll call you in two minutes. Can I call you in two minutes? Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Fuck. All right. So. In closing, <laughs> so uh, so you're moving out here in September. Yeah. Well, it's an open invite to come back and do the podcast when you get out here. Fucking awesome, dude! Thank yeah. you so much. No, don't mention this it. This has been a dream, dream come true. Well, it's good to meet you, man. I was, I've I was been following you on Vine for since Vine started. Awesome. And uh, and like I said, man, I hope all that works out with the ma- manager. Get your shit. Get out here. Hell yeah. Get I out will. here. And everyone, if you don't already, follow him on Vine. Follow him on Twitter. Yeah, you're twi- at Rydoon. I'm right doing on Twitter. Yeah, I want more Twitter followers. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's not a race. You're gonna fucking be famous one day. Yeah. All right, thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. This episode was brought to you by the Machine.